السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I want to discuss a question that we ask a lot and many people inquire. يا شيخ, I've been making dua for such a long time and my dua is not answered. I don't see the the result of my dua. Why my dua is not being answered? I'm trying everything I can. So, inshallah ta'ala, in this short talk today, we will discuss five main reasons why the dua is not answered, okay? So, first, the number one reason is the dua itself is weak and the person who's making dua, he is also weak. يعني, he is making the dua in a way that, in a careless way. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. No, no life in the dua. The dua is coming from a heedless heart. No, nothing in the dua. يعني as if he's making dua as you know because he he heard that you have you make dua it will be answered. So there's no life in that dua. And the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith is in Tirmidhi, you should know that Allah does not answer the dua that comes from a heedless heart. So. Uh, the opposite is true. The dua, when I'm making the dua, I should put my heart in the dua. يعني, like they say, from the bottom of your heart, you're asking the dua, you're in dire need. You are feeling that you are so weak and Allah is the, is the most powerful. You are feeling that you are so poor and Allah is the all rich. You are see, you're feeling you are so helpless and Allah is the Qadir. He's, he's capable of doing anything. So number one, is having a heedless heart is the obstacle. Number two is the person himself has doubt in Allah's ability to answer the dua. So he's answering the dua, it, if it happened, it happened. Huh? So uh, he, his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering the dua is, is weak. And he would say, oh, you know, this is cancer. How is this going to be cured? It's a million dollar debt. What is what dua is going to do? So he's he is himself doubting before he makes a dua. What kind of what do you expect? And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Subhanallah. Listen carefully, my sisters, my brothers. Udhu Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. I want you to concentrate on the word muqinun from the word yaqin. Make dua and you have yaqin that dua, the dua will be answered. The dua will be answered. I'm not asking another human being. I am not asking president or a person that is his capability are limited. I am asking the all powerful, the all wise, the all knowing, the one who knows the unseen, the one who has the vaults of everything. Like he said, Allah said in the Quran, there's nothing except we have its vaults. What do you want? Uh, wealth? Allah has its vaults. You want health? Allah has its vaults. You want righteous uh, children, righteous wife? Allah has its vaults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has everything. So when we are making dua, the yaqeen that 100% will take place, it should be there. And lacking that yaqeen will affect the answer of the dua. Third, which is very, very common, very common, uh, yeah, Sheikh, uh, I've been making dua for a year almost, and wallahi, nothing is happening. So I stopped. La ilaha illallah. Big, huge mistake. Huge mistake. Let me give you a, a, an example. Do you know how long was the period of time between losing Yusuf alayhi salam and reuniting with his father, Yaqub? Some ulama said 40, and some ulama, just like the Imam al Tabari, he said, 80 years. Ya'qub, Ya'qub, a prophet, alayhi salam, he is the most beloved to Allah at that time, right? The, the, the prophet of the time is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making dua to reunite with his son. It took 80 years to answer the dua of Ya'qub. And you did the dua for eight minutes, 80 days, and you were surprised. Why is this happening? Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua, Ya Allah, send among them a prophet, a, a person that he will purify them and he will teach them your deen. It took thousands of years for the dua to be answered. So be patient, do not rush. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the dua of any one of you, 
will be answered by Allah as long as he uh, does not show impatience by saying, yeah, I prayed to Allah and I prayed and my prayer was not answered. Hadith is in Bukhari. I prayed and I prayed and there was the answer, the dua was not answered, so I stopped praying. Subhanallah. The dua is up to you. The timing for the answer is up to Allah Azza wa Jal. It looks like, you know, somebody who uh, uh, bought a piece of land. He put the seeds. He watered the seeds. And then he waited one week, two weeks, three weeks, no fruits. He left the land and you know what? He gave up. No, oh, the fruits are coming. Just be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the cure for everything. Allah has the solution for everything. So keep knocking, keep asking. So this is an issue that we always face. Why? I made so much dua for my son to be cured. I made so much dua to, be, to, be, to get that job. I made so much dua to marry that uh, brother or that sister. Leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal, he is the all expert. He is the all wise. Who are we? What is our knowledge compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are dealing, you are asking the one who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen in a million years. He knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows what's good for you and knows what's bad for you. So you just ask and you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be hasty. Fourth, a major reason why the dua is not answered and many people do not pay attention to this and that is unlawful income, haram income, haram income. A person who's dealing with riba all the time, a person who's selling and buying uh, alcohol or any haram, huh? he is asking Allah and he's wondering why my dua is not being answered. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us the story about the man who's traveling. He is traveling, he's tired, he's in dire need, huh? and he's raising his hand and he's asking, but his food is from haram, his clothing is from haram, his drinks is from haram. How is he gonna be answered? So my brother, my sister, if you notice that you've been making the dua, and the dua is not being answered, one of the reasons you should check, check your income. And wallahi, a side note, my brothers and sisters, please listen carefully. Wallahi, it's not worth it to get a penny from haram income, a penny. And you were four months old in our mother's womb, okay? You're still four months, your, your mother, my mother was four months pregnant with us. At that time, Allah decreed how much wealth we are going to make. Let's assume that Allah said, uh, uh, this person, uh, Abdullah, he is going to make in his lifespan of 60, 70, 80 years, he is going to make $1 million. All his span, he's going to make $1 million. Abdullah will not die before he makes the million dollars. He will not die before the risk is complete. Now, how does he make the million dollars goes back to Abdullah. Is he going to earn it from halal? Is he going to earn it from haram? Is he going to rob it? Is he going to steal it? Is he going to inherit it? Somebody's going to give it a gift to him. This is what's going to Abdullah's decision. Okay, so the amount is still the same. How we earn it, it depends on us. So do not think that by you dealing with haram, that is going to make your income huge. That money is going to come to you anyway. Just seek the halal means and put your trust in Allah and that wealth, that rizq is coming 100%. Okay? The last reason, the fifth reason, or the fifth possibility why the dua is not answered, let's narrate the hadith and you will get it automatically. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know what, when a hadith starts by Rasulullah swearing, wallah, it, it shakes my heart. Rasulullah he said, by him in, in whose hand my life is, or is my life. Yani he's swearing by Allah Azza wa Jal. What is it that you're swearing, uh, swearing about, Ya Rasulullah? He said, you either enjoin good and forbid evil, or Allah will certainly send his punishment upon you. And this is the shahid, you will make a lot of dua and it will not be answered. So 
The, the last obstacle we will be discussing is ordering good and forbidding evil. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. When we stop doing that, and ya Allah, ya Allah, how many people stop doing that right, these days? Subhanallah. Oh, alhamdulillah, I am good. My family is good. I don't really care about anybody else. We see the haram, we see members of our families, members of our families uh, that do not pray, do not wear the hijab, do not deal with, they, they deal with riba, they do haram, and we don't order good and forbid evil. We don't say nothing, nothing. Oh, they might be upset with me. No, ya akhi, in a very nice, in a very gentle manner, order good and forbid evil. We're not telling you to beat people to, to obey Allah. This is not your job. Our job is to give the message, to remind the people, just like this, uh, <laughs> this program, just a reminder. We are telling you, we are reminding each other. We forget. Maybe your cousin who does not pray, maybe he did not know the importance of prayer, the importance uh, of uh, being consistent on the prayer, the danger of leaving the salat. Maybe the sister that you know that, that does not wear the hijab, maybe she heard from somebody that it's not a, a, an obligation. She thought it's just an option as long as she is dressed modestly, that is enough. No, you have to talk to her and explain to her the steps of the hijab kindly, gently. Do not be harsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لو كنت غليظ القلب من حولك. If you are harsh, people will run away from you. No, our deen is to come in a nice and gentle manner. You know, so uh, ordering good and forbidding evil is one of the means to make the dua answered and stopping it is one of the uh, obstacles of having our dua answered. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the reasons why the dua could be, why, why, what's the possibilities of the dua not being answered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer all our dua. May Allah azza wa jal, I ask you, Ya Allah, with the best of your names. Ya Allah, for, for myself and for my brother Samir who's taping me and for my brother Basir and for all the brothers and sisters who are watching us. Ya Allah, make their last deeds their best deeds. Ya Allah, accept all their a'mal in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. Ya Allah, bless us all with righteous children and righteous spouses. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, forgive all our sins. Ya Allah, Bless us with sincerity in all that we say and all that we do. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen.